Well, the idea really at first was a dance for six men. There were six of us in London Contemporary Dance, and we'd just done a tour of Brazil. And we'd heard the music. We'd seen a martial art form they do in Brazil called capoeira, which is very rhythmical and very beautiful. It's like halfway between dancing and fighting. And at the same time, we were studying uh, a martial art called Aikido. We were actually studying it in the company. So we thought we'd put this all in a dance. At the, that time, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I just said I was going to do a dance for six men. So the six of us got in the studio and we started messing around. A lot of us had brought Brazilian music back with us. And so we found some pieces to put together. At that point in um, modern dance, there was a lot of experimentation going on. And I wanted to get back to something that I thought was more like real dancing or dancing to music. So it started off with that in mind, in a way also of making fun of macho, macho men. Uh, we were kind of macho men in the company, but we wanted not to be, take ourselves too seriously about it. So we started off like that, then we let it slip into more undergraduate humor, which explains the level of humor in the dance. And at that point, I had uh, several ideas about what dancing was. I was starting to form my own ideas about what I thought dancing could be. And I knew that three essential factors were important. Stamina, of course. It was very important to have a lot of strength. Secondly, imagination. Imagination being smart. The third thing was that if you had rhythm and musicality and you could really dance, nothing could stop you. And in the actual dance itself, you'll see those three things brought out. The, the actual title of the dance, Troy Game, came from a book by Lincoln Kirstein, in which, in fact, I got a lot of uh, ideas for the dance. Um, there were some ideas in the book. One of them was about these young men that used to do this dance called the stork dance, where they would hop on one leg until one of them knocked the other one over. Another was a dance they did called the Pyrrhic dance, where men used to do dancing to prepare for war, to prepare for battle, which I thought was a great idea, that uh, in Sparta, men would actually dance in order to go into battle. Because today, dancing is looked upon as something maybe not that masculine, and I thought that would be very good for us. And so that's why the costumes are sort of like old um, Greek costume, like gla or gladiator costume, Roman costumes. But I wanted them not to be entirely antique. I wanted them to also be modern. So that's why they wear socks like um, soccer players. So it would be a combination of those two things. When we choreographed um, Troy Game, we did it in sections. And we never actually did it all together. And in fact, it's when Dan Seed of Harlem came to see a run through at the place that we first did it. And when we got to the end of it, we all just collapsed which is why the collapse happens at the end of the dance. But it was excruciating the first time we did it. And in fact, when we first did it, we only did it with six men, and six men did it all the way through. But um, Arthur Mitchell's expanded it for his great men, and I think it's made a different kind of dance, but equally interesting. The dance itself seems to be um, on quite a light level, and I don't mean it to have anything particularly meaningful about it, but I did think at that point that we needed to remember that dancing was really important. And I suppose that's where Dance Seat of Harlem comes in. And when uh, Arthur Mitchell saw the piece, I think he saw it would suit his dancers very well. So I think it was in 1977 that we decided to put it on for Dance Seat of Harlem. And as you can see, it really does suit them well.